Happy Tuesday, friends. I welcome you to this beautiful day in God's earth here in Columbus, Georgia. I welcome you to this dose of Danny's Downtown Daily Devotional Delight. I'm here at the Pemberton House on Broadway and 7th Avenue. And so we're going to talk about Coke a little bit, but I have to give you two bad jokes and then we'll move on. I'll limit it to just two. Uh, a man was fired as an employee of the Coca-Cola company, and his friend says, Buddy, I'm so sorry. How are you feeling? It's got to be hard to lose your job. And the man says, Yeah, I'm so depressed. So depressed. So depressed. So depressed. Yeah. Second one, man goes to the store and gets a six-pack and takes one off and throws it and hits his buddy in the head with a can of Coke. And his friend says, What are you doing? Why did you do that? And he said, Quit your whining. It's a soft drink. <laughs> it's soft. Yeah. All right, so Dr. Pemberton, born July 8th, 1831 in Knoxville, Georgia, grew up in Rome when he was 19, got his uh, medical degree from the Reform College of Georgia, which was in Macon, uh, came to Columbus, opened up his own drug store as chemistry was his forte. Um, and the pivotal event for what would become Coke later on happened in his service in the Confederacy in the Civil War. In 1865, in the Battle of Columbus, Pemberton sustains a saber wound to the chest. And as a result of managing that pain, becomes a morphine addict. And so as a chemist, he starts to try to find other pain-killing compounds that don't contain morphine, again, as he was addicted. This led to his first concoction that he called Pemberton's French wine coca. Had alcohol and all kinds of other good stuff, feeling no pain, I'm guessing, in that time. Well, about 1886, Atlanta, Fulton County entered the temperance movement, which was anti-alcohol, so he needed to alter his product to have the same compounds but no alcohol. And this is when he accidentally, we're told, uh, mixes uh, carbonated water with the syrup and we know the rest. Eventually it moves to Atlanta where it becomes the Coca-Cola company who last year in 2019 did $9.5 billion. My point is uh, Dr. Pemberton was trying to find and fill a need, solve a problem in his own life with his morphine addiction and wound up creating this company that he would never know how big and how influential and how worldwide it became. My challenge for us today is to also look at our lives and say, what problems have we solved in our own lives that we could help other people with as they might struggle? Maybe it's cigarette addiction. Maybe it's alcohol addiction. Maybe it's gambling. Maybe um, it's anger. There are all kinds of things that we work through in our life that we could reach out in just a small way never knowing how big that effect will be on somebody's life that then affects somebody else's family systems, groups, uh, all kinds of things. Um, our passage today is from Matthew 25, 14 through 30, is the parable of the talents. Talent is just a sum of money. The master goes out of town and gives three of his servants different amounts of money and says, hey, do something with this till I get back. The first two do a great job. They earned, they take what the master gave them and earned more money. The third one had one talent, buried it in the ground because he was afraid to lose it. And so when the master came back, he buried it and said, hey, here you go. I didn't lose it. Yay. Master was upset. But to the other two who used what they had been given and increased what they had been given, uh, the master said, well done, good and trustworthy servant. Um, you have been faithful in a few things, so I will give you charge over many things. Enter in to the joy of your master. So today I want us to think about those things that we have been given and how we can, by helping and reaching out and serving others, even in small ways, make a difference in the world to both individuals we know and people we don't know. So I encourage you today... Open yourselves, share things that have worked for you and could work for other people, and don't be afraid to start in small places that may grow so then, as people of Christ, we can enter in to the joy of our Master by loving one another in His name. I love all of you. Miss you. Can't wait to see you again. God's blessings on you all. Peace.